so we're, we're coming to the end of the three-day marathon here. A um, couple of things. I want to um, just review what we've done, what we've said today. Um, as we've done in the past days, we've had, um, you know, a, a, someone summarize the, the comments that were made, and I've got a recap of them. So if you just bear with me one moment, I will put that up. Okay, so um, the, uh, the comments came today from uh, Shubetsha Paul, and uh, a good job, a great job of um, summarizing, I think, what we heard today. Um, the first bullet there is about, you know, industrial heat is a cross-cutting challenge. I think a big theme, especially in the first panel today, was all about heat. Um, you know, how can we, you know, what are the ways in which we can address heat management and so on and so forth. And we heard about fuel switching, direct and indirect electrification of heat, um, energy storage, and, and just generally um, heat management. Um, and it's really obviously one of the big, big challenges, if not the big challenge of, of what we're talking about here in, in, in this uh, workshop. Um, I think probably um, uh, I have to give credence to, to what Mark said, of course, scale and what I once said as well, of course, scale is, uh, of course, another big, big um, challenge, of course. Um, we, you know, we heard about um, wind and solar, uh, their potential solutions, but of course they are intermittent. And so we had uh, both Antora Energy and Wando Energy talk about their thermal storage approaches and, and how it, um, and using, uh, with Wando it was more refractory bricks, with um, Antora it was a graphite. Um, they seem very, very exciting ways of, of trying to address the issue of, of trying to get heat for industry at the high temperatures that you need and they can provide that storage so that you can address that intermittency. So I think that was, um, I learned a lot from, from that. Um, then in academic research, um, there were, you know, comments were made about the reliability of electric, electricity supply and upscaling lab proven technologies with a system view. I think there was a, you know, we, we are, um, we can come up with technologies in lab, but can we get it to the pilot scale and, and move it on, I think was one point that was made. And then the whole system view, uh, you can't just look at this industrial um, processes just in isolation, you do need to uh, see um, how, how they impact the rest of the system. And I think there was another point that was made here that I that resonated with me, and that was actually the waste streams. So some of the waste streams from these um, industrial processes, how can you look at them as as a, a feedstock for another another process? How can you work with the CO2 that comes out of one process? How can you use it somewhere else? And I think that was um, that was a, um, a, a a theme that I, I heard today as well. Um, some of the, the key areas that uh, were identified, I think low loss transfer and storage of heat at high temperatures. Um, we looked at we heard about electrochemical options, um, decarbonization of the steel and cement industri industries. Um, um, obviously, how can we leverage some of the processes with, with electricity? And uh, just uh, actually, we even just heard about this now, you know, seasonal energy storage. How can we address things? Um, we, we need to think about seasonal energy storage. And um, so all of those, I think, were key areas. Um, the last point here is it's not just technology, there's policy work, there's regulatory development um, that we need to, uh, you know, to, that we need to address. These are very important uh, if we want to uh, come up with solutions for decarbonization, electrification of industry, um, modularization. We heard that, yeah, we heard that this morning as well. Uh, development of disruptive technologies, of course. And um, yeah, the idea of um, retrofitting existing in infrastructure. We shouldn't just think of just, uh, we, you know, we heard that infrastructure, some of these plants, they're massive, they, they're huge investments, um, they'll last 50 years or more. And so sometimes we need to think about retrofitting them rather than just replacing them. And of course, you know, doing everything that we're doing, we need to cater to societal needs. So um, those are some of the, the 
um, messages that we, we got out of today, uh, our first quick snapshot. Um, so um, the, what I would like to do now, actually, is to go to the um, closing section. I'd like to ask uh, Yi Trey, the director of the Pre Court Institute, to, to run this last session. He's going to be accompanied by Amy Herhold and Shafiq Jaffa. So um, Yi will make some closing comments and then we'll get some some closing reflections from both uh, Amy and Shafiq. So Yi, I'm going to uh, pass it on to you.